I'm Stanley Tan from HKT, uh, which is I'm in charge in the cloud service development and cloud service marketing, uh, including also the teleco perspective. So that today I will deliver the speech more about the multi-cloud. Um, is there somebody heard about multi-cloud before? Should be there is a lot of people talking about public cloud, hybrid cloud, or hybrid cloud even. But recently in this year, we see that more and more people talking about multi-cloud. Today, the presentation will go through more about the reason why we are approaching or planning for the multi-cloud and when we are planning for the multi-cloud strategy. What we have to think before we actually deploy and migrate our application, our business process to a multi-cloud infrastructure. So then maybe I just start my presentation so that if you got any questions, feel free to raise your hands and um, let's discuss. First of all, let me introduce HKT. Maybe some of you uh, will be familiar with HKT. Uh, HKT is a premium telecom provider in Hong Kong. We aim to provide premium service with speed, with performance, with customer service on the telecom service, including fixed network, telecom network, mobile network, all these kind of telecommunication service. But since five years before, we all also launched our public cloud service we call HKT Enterprise Cloud. That is leverage on our network strength that we are telco. We are managing an infrastructure on the private network, internet gateway, and data center. We leverage of our strength to develop our public cloud um, service to Hong Kong. Besides the public cloud, we also treasure on the innovations. We are telco, but recently we also launched our um, smart charge service. That is a um, smart charging service for the electronic uh, vehicles. And also we got our service we call Tap and Go. That is a payment service, a peer-to-peer -peer payment service that we launched for the retail merchants. And also we got event service. Just like today, we are also using our own event service for high density, short-term period, event service on telecommunications, including the Wi-Fi, the internet line, and also all the communication service on top. That is we call event service. And that is one signature event that we're previously working on the, uh, the former year, that we're using our own service to handle the overall event for the communications, including network, voice, and all the telecommunication service. And recently, we, are, we, we have some um, development on the cloud service. As I mentioned that before, we have our own public cloud service. But we see that in the market in Hong Kong, only one single service for that cannot fulfill all the business requirements from our enterprise customers. So we start to develop our public cloud strategy, leverage on the network. And later on in this presentation, I will go through more on the consideration and the strength that HKT can provide to enterprise when you're considering to implement a multi-cloud strategy. First of all, all the people should be asked why we need a multi-cloud. Some people said that multi-cloud is the future. The future is not a cloud, it's not a hybrid cloud, but multi-cloud. But what is that for? Because previously we heard about a lot of public cloud, hybrid cloud, but just this year or the year before we heard about multi-cloud. Multi-cloud from my point of view is a matter of scale, but make sure that the scale is not mentioned about, it's not talking about how many, how many workloads, how many servers that you are working on the cloud, but the scope of the cloud deployment, what is the cloud vision, how many business uh, problems or business processes you would like to so solve by the cloud. That is means if you've got a business process like a CRM, maybe you have to engage with a front-end database for the application or the customer data hosting Maybe you will leverage on your private cloud implementation. But if you're looking for some analysis or BI tools, you are looking for a, second part, uh, a third party BI tools on the cloud platform that is maybe riding on a public cloud service. So the point of deploying multi-cloud or considering multi-cloud multi that is a matter of scale. What is the scope that you will need a cloud to solve your business problem? Not a lot about how many servers that you're deploying. One, one servers, one cloud servers, and 1,000 servers, you can just consume with one single cloud service provider. But then you have to consider about the resilience. But today I will talk more about on the application side, 
or the scope of the cloud service that you would like to solve in your enterprise. In the old days, all the people will have their in-house traditional IT. And then, previously, just past few years, people are talking about the virtualization, the cloud, how to onboard to the cloud. And I see that in Hong Kong, the adoption of cloud is much, much faster than five years before. All the customers are already got some projects on the cloud, no matter on a development, on a pilot, or even in a production. And we're also working with some financial institute for their production applications for serving their end customers. So that we see that in Hong Kong, the cloud adoption is much faster than several years before. But nowadays, people are asking, is that one single provider can serve all the enterprise requirement with a single cloud service provider? When you're adopting with a multi-cloud strategy, the, the thing very important is you have to you have to have to plan very detailed, even down to an application, a process, or even an operation point of view, so that you can establish that kind of strategy. It's not easy, but that is one way that we have to consider it with. Actually, what is multi-cloud? People said that talking about multi-cloud, some, uh, some, some, some customer also go to our proof we discussed so, uh, just hour before that. Multi-cloud is that you're just using one, one single provider, uh, two provider, Amazon, Azure, just separate different servers, different contracts to different provider. That is not the truth. That is not the ideal idea for multi-cloud. Multi-clouds, from my point of view, that include multiple applications. So that depends on different applications you can leverage on that cloud service provider's wave to benefit to your own enterprise. So that there may be a multiple application. Later on, we'll talk more about what kind of application on that. Some, we can, we can call that as a generic function. Maybe some will be some expert system that you can leverage on a subject matter expert. The second one is the key purpose, the objective for deploying or planning for multi-cloud is to serve a specific needs. Different enterprise, they have different needs, different process, different operation needs. So you have to address, you have to plan what kind of problems or what kind of enhancement that you, are, you would like to leverage on the multi-cloud strategy to address your specific need. The, the third one, it will be you are using multi-cloud service provider. Then maybe you have to consider how to manage that different type of resources on different platforms, how to manage the contract with different provider on that, how to measure on the ROI for different cloud service providers architecture. Here still is a reference architecture for multi-cloud deployment. You can see that there is different capability within a reference architecture that you can see that there will be some typical, there will be some private cloud, public cloud, or even a host of private cloud. But on top of that, there will be a level layer to help you to integrate, to connect with different cloud platform. Maybe you heard about Azure, they got an express route. Azure, they will got their own um, cloud direct. That kind of connectivity to help you to link up all the application or all the process across different cloud service provider. Besides the network layer, you have to plan for your resources planning. What kind of resources put on which cloud platform? Just say an example, maybe you are using, you are targeting for a massive storage. Then maybe you are looking for a cost effective storage for massive, maybe for archiving, maybe for data backup. And then maybe you have some high processing power computing resources then, you have to plan for a specific function. Just take an example for HKT. We are choosing performance, performance guarantee, and network connected accessibility. We are, we are this kind of telco cloud. So that if you got some applications that closely related to your end users, and that you have to guarantee on the performance between the network, between the computing, then maybe you consume some front-end application on our enterprise cloud. But you got some analyze, you, you got some BI capability, then you may, you may, maybe you have to leverage on a third-party cloud. But the most important thing is you have to connect or integrate different cloud service provider, different applications together, maybe wider network, maybe for the IP transportation, maybe for the RESTful API, this kind of different integrations between cloud service provider. There will be some specific function, as I mentioned before, that on the BI, on the analysis, on the archiving, subject matter expertise, analyzing, we call specific function capability. 
then you have to plan which functionality that you're looking for and what kind of cloud service provider can provide that functionality to you. This kind of infrastructure thing you can plan before. But more important, we see that on the monitoring, the visibility. How can you have a single wheel on all the system on the different cloud service providers? So that uh, recently we also launched our service that we call Cloud Wheel. That is providing a single management plane that you can have a single dashboard with all the VM, all the systems that distributed in different client, different cloud service provider. So that on the IT points of view, you can still maintain a single wheel for all the system availability, performance, and also the utilization on that part. Besides the monitoring, the visibility, you may, maybe you have to consider about the operation side. How can you control? How can you control on different cloud service provider? Because you can think that we, we still can employ some expertise. They can operate the Azure cloud. They can operate uh, the Amazon cloud. They can operate the enterprise cloud. They have the skill set. But actually, that talent is not easy to find it. You, you have a talent to operate or have the knowledge or have the skill set on different cloud service provider. That is, uh, the cost will be very high. So that you have to look for a single management pane for the orchestration, a single portal or single management tools to help you to in integrate with different cloud service provider to help you to learn one single tools. Then you can operate different cloud service and deploy, operate, update, retiring, back covering. This kind of operation you just leverage on a single management tools for different cloud service provider platform. Of course, we are, took, we are looking, uh, we are taking care about the operation, but more important, we see that in Hong Kong, for the cloud adoption, we'll be on security, we'll be on compliance, because not all the company, not all the enterprise, they have a, and uh, they have a security policy, they have a compliance policy, on top of cloud. Some some customers previously they have, they we discussed with him that uh, with them, talking about on the cloud onboarding, they are very interesting in cloud, but they do not have guidelines, they do not have a security policy if they are using a cloud infrastructure. Just one example that there is one compliance course that they have to comply with. All the equipment need to be on site. Then if you are using this kind of compliance, then you have very, very difficult to consider about, about the cloud. But from time to time change, some organizations, some compliance, and the security policy, you have to cope with a cloud adoption. So that you have to consider what is the security compliance, what is the policies for your own enterprise. But you cannot compromise on security. So you have to classify what kind of applications, what kind of data you can put on the cloud platform, what kind of things you still have a private hosting environment or even a private cloud environment. Take an example that just like I told before, on the CRM. CRM, you got a database, typically a, a deployment web app DB, a web front end, an application logic, and also the database for the, all the data housing. Maybe you got the compliance that on the database you cannot house anywhere outside your, your premises. Maybe that is a compliance. Then you have to deploy your database within the on-premises infrastructure. But for the application or the web front end, there is no customer data on inside. But you are looking for a scalability or agile, agile resources handling. Then that kind of application you can leverage on the public cloud service. That can provide more benefit to you, just like the security, the anti-DDoS, the web application firewall. If you're just taking care of uh, one single website, there is a huge number for you to invest in the security. But leveraging on cloud service provider, you can do a better operation on that because there is a built architecture on that. We have a, a security expert taking care of different security protection. So that this kind of deployment, you will mix of some public cloud deployment and together with some public cloud deployment because leverage on different platform stream and then you enjoy the most benefits on that. Just take that example. Then you have to got a single wheel to monitoring whether the web app layer is performed well, whether the database is performed as you expect, then a single management pane and an application awareness performance monitoring tools you have to, to have to deploy. Then 
this kind of uh, um, this kind of consideration or planning you have to do before you're migrating to the multi-cloud. Besides, we are talking about the capability, the resources, the specific function design and classification. But actually, what is the benefit? What are the benefits for deploying multi-cloud? Some people will looking for availability because as all you will heard that sometimes every single provider will have some maintenance, scared, no matter it's scheduled maintenance or unscheduled maintenance. To, to get the most benefit on the availability from your company, your IT infrastructure, then you maybe you will plan for a multi-cloud to leverage all the risks to a different cloud service provider. But the other thing will be on the flexibility. One, some, some enterprise in Hong Kong, they are looking for some pay as you go model on the, on the ROI cloud calculations. But some application, they do not, they, they would like to have a steady payment, steady bill for that, that kind of application to prevent the bill shock. For this kind of flexibility, you have to consider what kind of applications characteristics, then what kind of cloud service provider you deploy in. One example is, Maybe that kind of de DevOps environment. Sometimes you will build up the mach machines for some, maybe patch updates, just a several hours testing and, te uh, and, and patch updating. Then maybe you are considering a pay as you grow model because not all the time you will use that kind of resources so that you can enjoy on the commercial benefit for that kind of payment, uh, payment method. But some production application and you got unforecast network traffic then maybe you have, you can consider HKT Enterprise Cloud because we are a network service provider. We are not charging by that kind of network traffic. We're just charging on the, cap um, the resources allocation. But that kind, you can leverage on the commercial benefit on the ser or, or the service offering then to, con to, to select which is the best cloud service provider for your typical application. Because not all the applications have the same characteristic. Just like I mentioned before, some you have some fast free traffic, some you just got some short term bursty traffic, then you can consider it on a multi cloud service provider. The next one will be options. All people will know that option, let me to choose it. If you are considering, or even in day one, you are architecting your IT infrastructure based on a, a multi cloud platform, you maintain the option to yourself, to your enterprise, because you can migrate in your workload among different cloud service providers so that you will not have some uh, fun, fun, fundamental lock-in from a cloud service provider. Because sometimes maybe you heard about that, uh, we have to de deploy some application on a specific cloud service provider, but we cannot move out from that because different kind of reasons. Because maybe on the financial, maybe on the technical, maybe on the operational, a restriction that you cannot easily migrate your workload, your applications among different cloud service providers. So, architecting a multi cloud strategy can maintain the option to your enterprise so that you can have the option to plan for different applications on different cloud service providers. Talk about multiple and single. In a multi cloud strategy, you can enjoy a multiple infrastructure to increase your reliability your availability uptime on that part. And also, you can address for different multiple specific needs. Just like maybe we have some customer, is a retail customer. They have to work with some expert system on the analysis for the uh, customer CRM. Then you can have some specific cloud service provider on that function. But database, maybe you, have, you can architect with another cloud service provider on the database part or data dashboard. And also, you can work with different cloud service for provider to maintain the negotiate power from your enterprise to get the best commercial offering and the contract, of, uh, contract offering. But with a, sing, with a multi cloud uh, architecture, you still have to consider a single management pane, a single visibility, as I mentioned before, and also a unified architecture so that you maintain the pop up. The the portability of your cloud applications so that you ensure in day one design all your applications can migrate among different cloud service provider. 
that maintain your options, as I mentioned. Talk more about the manageability, visibility, and also the connectivity, or what we call performance. On the manageability, we call state manageability, state manageable. That is called that is because on the operation cost, operation control. We have a lot of customers that they are adopting with cloud, but the biggest challenge is not technical, but operation. How we operate with your cloud service provider to keep maintain your daily operation on the IT operations. That is one change. If you are engaging with multiple cloud service provider, the model will be more complicated. Then you have to think before you migrating your application, your workload on the multi-cloud. The second thing is the security and compliance. How to align different cloud service platform to provide a unified or aligned security and compliance. That you can leverage on some security protections or you can leverage on some international standards on the security, just like the SOC, just like the ISO 2017 and 01. This kind of certification to align with the security protection on your workload. The last one will be on SLA. Different cloud service provider, the SLA measurement is different. I, I think that if you are engaging with different cloud service provider, you will understand that how they calculate on the SLA is different. So you have to consider how to align with the SLA or manage your SLA before you engage with multiple cloud service provider. Besides the manageability, also talk about the visibility. That is one one sample uh, screen capture from our service that you can have a single pane for a workload on the Azure, on the private cloud, and also you can have the uptime for a, another cloud service provider. That is the currently we are, we are uh, offering to our customer. And also you can have some trend analysis across multiple platforms. So that you can have to, you, you can monitor on the users, resources utilization on also on the performance to do the estimation and performance monitoring, and also to maintain the uptime, to monitoring on the uptime. Besides visibility, we have to consider about the inter data transaction or application transaction, interoperability, so that what kind of common protocol, what, what kind of architecture, what kind of connectivity that you're engaging with multiple cloud service provider, and whether that is a latency sensitive, you have to consider about that. Or is wildly public access, you have the scalability on the bursty traffic. And also, is a internal application and external applications. So that the end customer, where they come from, you have to plan for that kind of architecture. That is one example that I mentioned before on the um, cloud CRM. Just like this, this is one of our servers to be launched. We got some Wi-Fi service to rate retail customers. They can offer the Wi-Fi service to their uh, visitor or the customers to lock in. And then when they lock in, they can use the social analytic tools for capture that kind of information or demographic from the social media. And then we got a CRM to, con to store all the related information for further processing. When do you are during the processing, maybe you will have to do some dashboard. Maybe you have to do some BI or data analysis, then you can leverage on different cloud service provider. Just like example, we are using Power BI on the dashboard. So that you can have the screen. But if you're asking, HKT, can you provide a comprehensive dashboard? I will ask you, maybe you consider using a already familiar with or more people on that supporting that kind of technology. Maybe Power BI will be one of the options for that. Then in this kind of case, you are engaging with multiple cloud service provider to leverage their strength to deliver an end business requirement. From HKT, we have our own enterprise cloud. And also, we are engaging with different cloud service provider to offer a unified cloud service experience to our customer. But we also have our strength on the network. We already connect with different cloud service provider to help you even though what, what kind of workload you are deployed in different cloud service provider, you can still maintain a connected infrastructure, a unified infrastructure within a single management pane. There is a series of cloud service offering that we are, pro we are providing to, for enterprise customers. Today we have approved in outside at uh, stand J15. 
so that we have some demonstration on the cloud view that I mentioned before on a single management plane for a monitoring on multi-cloud architecture. We have some IoT deployment on the multi-cloud architecture. And also we got some next generation uh, workspace demonstration how to leverage different cloud tools for your enhancing your new staff uh, onboarding experience. So that welcome, welcome all you guys to come together to discuss more, to talk, let, let us to discuss more about the cloud journey that you are looking for. Today is, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attendance. And I will be here. If you have any questions, you can just uh, let me know. Thank you. Thank you for your time.